Hello everyone, Stephen Pinball Room, and today we're going to go through and build out what I'm hoping is the final design for our subway. Now that we have all the mechs for upper playfield all figured out. This, if you recall, was our old subway that worked great for our old playfield layout, but now we kind of have a few mechs in the way from the upper playfield, um, which is good. Um, we now know exactly where our flipper mech needs to go, where the horseshoe diverter mech is going to go, the other flippers, etc. So now we can really figure out what that final path is going to be in. Well, it's not this, okay? Woo! Okay. That was loud. So, um, and thank you to um, Laurent who gave me the idea here. I was trying to figure out the path for the ball, and it was either going to need to go between the diverter and the, and the, um, and the flipper mech right here, or come in front of it. And I decided, I think correctly so, it needs to come in front. But one of the things he pointed out was um, taking the bracket and just rotating it 180 degrees to get that bracket a little more out of the way also. It almost is up even a little bit more. The primary thing I have to worry about are just the edges of this diverter to make sure whatever subway I have doesn't like get on top of that and block that from going below the play field. But as long as I stay clear of these two edges and the bracket's out of the way, I think I've got a pretty good path here. I feel, I feel good about it. So much so that I went through and started to print out um, the next one. So this was my first attempt kind of eyeballing off these sketches as to where things should go. And um, I'm only going through and printing off these thin pieces of plastic. No point to print off an entire subway mech until I know exactly that I even have the right path. So I'm just, this was about uh, four millimeters. Um, I probably won't even go that thick on my next one. But I got a piece here. That one goes in good, but I didn't get this angle quite right here. Um, and so it's actually coming, that's blocking the diverter, blocking the diverter. Now, I, I actually know a better way to do this to make sure I get my angles right the first time. Um, I just ordered this off Amazon, and it should make things way easier for me, but it doesn't get here for a couple days. I don't want to wait for it. So we're doing it the old school fashion of me just kind of eyeballing and guessing. I don't have a protractor or any good compass to tell me the angles. So I'm like, I know what 90 degrees is. Um, anyways, I'm getting a tool that'll help me do it more accurately, but for now, I guessed. And that was too shallow of an angle, and so it came down here and hit this, and just, I mean, didn't get us to the right place really at all, okay? So, yeah. So, I made a second attempt. All right, this is my second attempt. Ah, now look at that. That's following that, the, those pencil marks a lot closer, isn't it? I feel really good about that. Then I got to here, and did this, and those measures are still not right. I'm coming, I'm not coming in right. This is cutting off the diverter again. So I really need to make, take it and like do a thing like that and rotate and have like another bend. Cause if I just go straight through, I mean, I had that in my markings also. I was just trying to get this angle right. So I got that angle right. And now I've got to get this next angle. And so the way I'm going to do that is just take these two pieces and just rotate this one underneath the other one until it lines up with the buck over here. Okay, Oop. I will take that and I'm going to mark this with my pencil. Make sure those are both accurate. Okay, and that pencil mark there is gonna let me know the distance here is how much I need to have this um, I have these as two separate pieces in Fusion 360 because it's too big for me to print out as a single piece in my 3D printer, right? So these are two separate pieces. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to rotate it, okay, in Fusion 360 until measuring down here. This is, let's tell you how I'm going to do that here. This is 16 millimeters. So I'm going to mark that point in Fusion 360. I'm gonna rotate into that point and comes up and touches this other one. And then I'll, I, I should have it pretty darn close to that right, to that right angle, to the correct angle, it's not a right angle, but to the correct angle, all right? And then that should get us almost perfectly to where we need to be, okay? So let's go do that one. All right, we're back. Okay, these ones you can see are even more flimsy. I'm basically just doing like one layer because why waste the plastic, right? Um, all right, which one is which here? Oop. Is that right? Yep, is that skinnier? Dun, dun, dun. 
Woo! That is just about perfect. Like I'm coming right there. That needs to be rotated just a smidge back. I might have overcompensated just a hair, but that's clearing over on that side. That one's clearing there. Can you see that in the camera? I'll try to zoom in. All right, this should be a better angle. You can see over my shoulder, hopefully better. We are looking really good there, really close. So this piece is just inside, okay? Just inside the, the diverter right there, okay? So I think we're looking good there. Can you see that part? I think you can, that's good. Trust me, it's good. And if we hold that in that position, this piece up, we are also outside the cut for the diverter right there. Okay, so we're good. And this comes down. We're not a perfect lineup for the VUC here, but we're pretty close. We might need to just rotate the whole thing. I mean like half a degree, quarter degree. Yeah, that's looking really good. I think we're pretty much there. So now I need to go through. I've got, can you see over here? So I have a post right here, right in front of this buck. And that's for the support for that other ramp, my right ramp. So I've got to make sure my subway comes and kind of has a little bit of like a, of a cutout here, a little square. Cause this is going to be going right through the side of that subway, but it's okay. Cause the ball is not going to roll along the wood. The ball is going to be traveling along the bottom of that subway. Right? So I won't even hit that, but I just need to make sure my subway, like, you know, I cut out a notch basically the edge of my subway right there for that. So that's not a big deal. And my handy dandy tape measure. I know that I need to come back from the VUC 20 millimeters to give it some clearance. And how tall is this? This is about 16 millimeters tall. So we might go like 18 just to be safe. So was that 20 by 18? 20 this way, 18 tall. All right. So now we need to go model that in Fusion 360 and build out the walls. So this actually, you know, whoop, comes up like the other one. All right. So a little more work in Fusion 360. Um, I'll cut over and show you some screenshots of that and then we'll come back and, oh, the other thing I need to map out is where the little feet are gonna be to fasten this. So this is where the subway is going to be. Where are there clear parts in the play field underneath that I can't fasten it? So, Right here, I can add a fastener, okay? You can add one here on this side also where the ball drops and hits it. Might not be bad to have two reinforcements right there. And then we can have another one coming out right here along the midway, okay? That's to secure that one really well. And then for this guy, We can have one coming out right here and another one before this cutout right over here. So those two should be good. Yeah, that should be plenty secure. So I'll measure out where those are gonna be roughly also. Super professional, right? <laughs> but it works, I don't care. Okay, we'll take these precise um, schematics down to Fusion 360 and get a final piece um, created and see if we can get it installed. All right, let's go. All right, here we are, next day. This was printing for like six hours last night, so just now getting a chance to try it out. But yeah, that's looking good right there. Just clears the diverter. 
and he's yep okay looks good I'm gonna screw this one side in and then the other one we've got to we've got to cut out the hole for the ball still but this guy we can get in place Subway is in. Let's just see if it works. These cords out of the way. It all comes in. Boop. Comes out. Not super exciting. Sorry. Not power's not hooked up, but there we go. We got our subway. I need to start this hole just a little bit more this way. And then we're good though. Yep, all right, so there we go. We have a working subway. I don't have anything wired up, so I can't give a more exciting demo, but actually running through and getting popped out, but just trust me, it, it, it works. Um, no, okay, all right, so subway done. Now we gotta get on to the last thing. Last thing. <laughs> oh, that was funny, the last thing. <laughs> the next thing, there's, there's no end. Um, no, so I gotta go in on a wiring harness, get this up so we can play test it, but I'm also, I have this, this empty spot over here and I'm not sure what to put here. So I'm open to suggestions on great things to put down here in this lower area. Remember we're gonna have the rail or the starting lane metal guy coming out here. Uh, um, one of you, I believe it was Neil, suggested putting in similar like Jurassic Park, um, the S shot on Chaos, like a like a 180 that could just re like return back. It's not a bad idea. Um, I don't know. I'm not dying for like another another tight ramp, but maybe. Um, when there's something cool I could do with like a magnet over here, but I haven't really thought of anything amazing um, with magnets there. <clears throat> That's one thing we don't, we don't have any magnets on this uh, machine yet, so. And that won't be there for the show in June, but uh, maybe afterwards we'll add a magnet. Sometimes just the general ones underneath just to disrupt the ball are fun. I'm not sure if we're going to need that though. I kind of prefer it when there's more of like a purpose or reason for the magnet versus just chaos. Chaos is fun, like Adam's Family and other ones that can be fun, but I don't know. I'd almost rather have it do something more interesting with the ball than just yank it around. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I mean, we could just put like, you know, two or three stand-ups over here that help you qualify things for another mode. There could be the whole like little um, sneak inside the, the flipper shot where you lift the flipper up and the ball goes behind back into the starter lane. Um, uh, I don't know if it's just because I don't have enough of the rules and modes figured out. And so I can't really think of like, what would I use it for? How would that be nice? But if you have any great ideas of fun little areas you like seeing in the lower play, th lower play field, the lower third area, um, let me know, because I'm looking for something new, okay? Um, but that's, uh, that's it for today. So I'm gonna wrap this up, get uploaded, and try to figure out what the heck to put in here. So if you have ideas, send them in quick, because I'm trying to figure this out in the next couple of days, um, so we don't blow our schedule. <laughs> it's probably already blown. But uh, yeah, when do you ask, will I have any code for this at the show, or will, it just be, will I just be looking for feedback on like the kinetic feel of the shots? Uh-huh, I don't know. I'm hoping I'll have at least like a basic mode and I'll have everything hooked up to a start button with a working ball trough and shooter lane. You can 
play a game, but um, or play a mode. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. The jury, jury's out. It, it might just be just play testing the kinetic flow of the shots. We'll see. I really want to get the stepper motor up and working in advancing. If we can get this advancing, then I don't know. We'll see. It's hard. It's hard to say right now. We've got like eight weeks. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time. See ya. Mm -hmm.